August 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 23 and 24 from the Old Testament. Then Job answered, Even today my complaint is still bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I could come to his place of residence. I would lay out my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know with what words he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me with great power? No, he would only pay attention to me. There an upright person could present his case before him, and I would be delivered forever from my judge. If I go to the east, he is not there, and to the west, yet I do not perceive him. In the north, when he is at work, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I see no trace of him. But he knows the pathway that I take. If he tested me, I would come forth like gold. My feet have followed his steps closely. I have kept to his way and have not turned aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my allotted portion. But he is unchangeable, and who can change him? Whatever he has desired, he does. For he fulfills his decree against me, and many such things are his plans. That is why I am terrified in his presence. When I consider, I am afraid because of him. Indeed, God has made my heart grow faint. The Almighty has terrified me. Yet I have not been silent because of the darkness, because of the thick darkness that covered my face. Why are times not appointed by the Almighty? Why do those who know him not see his days? Men move boundary stones. They seize the flock and pasture them. They drive away the orphan's donkey. They take the widow's ox as a pledge. They turn the needy from the pathway and the poor of the land hide themselves together. Like wild donkeys in the desert, they go out to their labor, seeking diligently for food. The wastelands provides food for them and for their children. They reap fodder in the field and glean in the vineyard of the wicked. They spend the night naked because they lack clothing. They have no covering against the cold. They are soaked by mountain rains and huddle in the rocks because they lack shelter. The fatherless child is snatched from the breast. The infant of the poor is taken as a pledge. They go about naked, without clothing, and go hungry while they carry the sheaves. They press out the olive oil between the rows of olive trees. They tread the wine presses while they are thirsty. From the city the dying groan and the wounded cry out for help, but God charges no one with wrongdoing. There are those who rebel against the light. They do not know its ways, and they do not stay on its paths. Before daybreak, the murderer rises up. He kills the poor and the needy. In the night, he is like a thief. And the eye of the adulterer watches for the twilight, thinking, No eye can see me, and covers his face with a mask. In the dark, the robber breaks into houses, but by day they shut themselves in. They do not know the light. For all of them, the morning is to them like deep darkness. They are friends with the terrors of darkness. You say he is foam on the face of the waters. Their portion of the land is cursed so that no one goes to their vineyard. The drought as well as the heat carry away the melted snow. So the grave takes away those who have sinned. The womb forgets him. The worm feasts on him. No longer will he be remembered. Like a tree, wickedness will be broken down. He preys on the barren and childless woman and does not treat the widow well. But God drags off the mighty by his power. When God rises up against him, he has no faith in his life. God may let them rest in a feeling of security, but he is constantly watching all their ways. They are exalted for a little while, and then they are gone. They are brought low like all the others and gathered in, and like a head of grain they are cut off. If this is not so, who can prove me a liar and reduce my words to nothing? Godwin, Job is talking about the darkness. It breaks my heart when he's talking about there are those who rebel against the light. They do not know its ways and they do not stay on its paths easily referring to people who don't know and don't walk in your light, who who aren't saved yet, who don't have eternal life. And my heart breaks for them. But it also goes on to talk about the adulterer, 
watches for the twilight thinking no eye can see me and covers his face with a mask. And even though that can be the unsaved, I think sometimes it's the saved as well. It's how we try and hide our slipping away from you. One of the easiest ways for me to tell if one of my friends is starting to slip is because they are hiding things. Um, maybe they don't want to talk as much. Maybe they don't want to go out as much. There's something that is odd about their behavior. And I think so often, because we don't like confrontation per se, uh, we don't say anything. We just go, oh, maybe they're just upset by something, something's going on, whatever it is. But a lot of times I look at those things and try really hard to come into their life at that point and say, I'm here for you. What is going on? And I have, I have amazing friends who do the same thing for me because they know the moment that something changes in my life. We should know that we can't hide sin from you, God, but somehow we still try to do it as we're sliding backwards away from what we know that we should be choosing and the life that we should be reflecting. In instead, we're hiding things, whether it be deception of heart, deception of mind, uh, physical deceptions, whatever those look like, we try and hide them. God, I just pray for discernment today for everyone listening to this video that if they see one of their friends starting to act a little bit different, a little bit um, covertly, I, for lack of a better word, they'll know it. Uh, if you'll show it to them, they'll know when they see it and actually sit down with their, their friend and, and maybe pray with them and, and just ask them, you know, what's going on in your life? I'm, I'm here not to judge you. I'm just here to help you. And maybe that's part of it, too, is we're so afraid that our friends' lives are perfect, that if we're slipping, that they won't understand. Yet we all slip. I slip all the time. And it's that process of transparency and opening yourself back up so that you can receive forgiveness from you, God. And move on with your life and, and grow back closer into that relationship. God, just help us to see what that looks like in our friends' lives. And, and even more importantly, allow us to see it in our own lives. We're aware that we do that, that we start to do this hiding thing of not opening our Bible one or two days, not praying to you, suddenly not going to church and that kind of snowballs. We know that we're in that situation. But help us to see that, that way out, that path to, to get back to you. I know that there is nothing that we can do, nothing we can do that could ever stop you from loving us. Nothing at all. That you would always welcome us back with wide open loving arms, no matter what it is that we did. That we only need to seek forgiveness, true repentance for what it is that we have done. And you will wrap your arms around us and welcome us back without even a moment happening. God, help us turn away from the darkness. Allow us to always walk in the light and allow us to be incredibly aware when we have people who we love and people who we may not know who aren't walking in the light and show us how we can help them come back into your light. In your son's name I pray, amen.